In this video, we're going to be going over a complete Wayfinder Beginner's Guide. I had an opportunity to play in the beta, so I have quite a few hours in the game. And most recently, I was able to participate in an early look at the early access version of the game. So for the past few days, I've been pouring in a ton of hours into Wayfinder and have been quite enjoying it. So a massive shout out to Airship Syndicate and the legendary Sir Snarf for allowing me to be a part of that. It was absolutely incredible. But over the course of the betas and this early access look, I have learned quite a lot about the game. And I want to share that information with you guys so whenever you start playing wayfinder on august the 15th which is today you guys can jump right in and enjoy your playing experience so this guide is going to include things like the progression systems in the game how combat works the echo system the weapon system some tips and tricks and a whole lot more but first i wanted to quickly talk about the core gameplay loop for just a second in case you're unfamiliar with how it works wayfinder is an mmo light this means that you will be seeing and interacting with other players in the game however it's not yet a full-blown mmo experience Experience. The core gameplay loop revolves around running expeditions or dungeons in order to level up your Wayfinder and your weapons. You're going to be searching for specific loot to craft certain items and then basically rinse and repeat this process. So the game is very much an item chase. So any Wayfinder can equip any weapon in the game. So you're going to be looking for different varieties of weapons and items to equip and level up. There is a targeted looting system. So you're going to be able to farm specific dungeons or bosses in order to obtain what you're looking for. Along with the core gameplay loop, there's also open world areas to explore, quests to complete, stories to dive into a very well put together housing system and a whole lot more when you first jump into the game it's recommended that you just begin with running the main story quest this is going to familiarize you with a lot of the systems in the game and unlock some much needed items to progress your gameplay as you work your way through some of the quests you're going to begin to level up your wayfinder and your weapon character progression wayfinder consists of several different systems the two main ways to progress is by leveling up your wayfinder and by leveling up your weapons so once you're in the game you can open up your character loadout by pressing the default key of c here you're going to see your currently equipped wayfinder and currently equipped weapon the max level for both a wayfinder and a weapon is level 30. your wayfinder and weapon will level up separately from one another and leveling one wayfinder to 30 does not carry over to the other wayfinders and that same applies to weapons so you're going to need to level up each wayfinder individually and each weapon in the game can be leveled individually as well to max level as you level up your wayfinder your power rating is going to increase this will increase your overall stats for that particular wayfinder making them more powerful if you click on your wayfinder from the loadout screen this will take you to your character screen from here if you have acquired any other wayfinders you can switch to them Selecting a Wayfinder will show you their current stats, and if you select a Wayfinder and press the middle mouse button, you're also going to see their abilities, and you can see their currently equipped Echoes from here as well. If you go back to your loadout screen and click on your weapon, it works the same way. You will then see a list of all the weapons you have acquired, and you can equip one at any time, unless you're currently in an instance dungeon, and you can't change your loadout once you're in an instance. You can also utilize the middle mouse to cycle through the pages of information here to see which Wayfinder currently has that weapon equipped. The echoes equipped to that weapon and the stats of the weapon another method of character progression is the affinity system you can access the affinity menu in your character screen and once there you can spend affinity points in order to gain additional bonuses you can also gain additional perks by hitting a certain affinity level as you level up you will earn affinity points these points can be used to upgrade your affinity and there are three different types of affinity there's instinct discipline and focus each of the different types of affinity will increase the power of your currently equipped items with specific stats so for example, increasing Nissa's instinct will increase max health, weapon power, and crit power. Discipline will increase max health, resilience, and ability power. And focus is going to increase weapon power, crit rating, crit power, and magic defense. It's very important to point out that you only receive these increases in power on the specific items you have equipped that have those stats. So this is not an overall passive buff as you increase your affinity. You can see which equipped items the affinity is affecting whenever you hover over the applicable affinity. So just to reiterate, by upgrading an affinity, the associated stats on the equipped weapon and accessories will be increased by a bonus multiplier. The bonus multiplier will be applied to any affinity align base stats coming from the current equipped loadout each of the character affinities also includes a collection of passive perks that are unlocked at key affinity levels you can view these perk details and unlock requirements via the affinity perk submenu each wayfinder has different perks associated with the affinity upgrade milestones so for example while on the affinity menu for nis if you press the default key of f you can view the affinity perks and which level the perks unlock and just like each wayfinder each weapon has affinities associated with it as well weapons have three sets of affinity aligned stat groupings that can be upgraded at any time using gloomstones when upgraded the included stats will permanently increase their values 
Each affinity aligned stack group affords a maximum number of upgrades, which is currently set at 10. However, in the future, you're going to be able to increase this further when a weapon has achieved max level. That system currently is not in the game and will not be there for early access, but whenever it enters into the game or whenever that feature is added, we'll make sure to cover that in detail as well. But the stats that are increased on your weapon via the affinity system will depend on the weapon that you are upgrading. It's important to point out that these upgrades are associated with that particular weapon. For instance, if you were to upgrade the focus affinity of Knight's Edge, you will receive an increase in max health and weapon power. If you were to equip a different weapon, you would no longer receive that benefit from upgrading Knight's Edge. You would need to upgrade the affinity on that weapon as well. Another form of progression is the weapon mastery system. You can upgrade your weapon mastery by navigating to the mastery section in the character screen. Once there, you can select the mastery you're wanting to upgrade. Upon hitting certain milestones with your upgrades, you'll be able to activate a passive that will enhance your weapon mastery. This can also help determine how you want to build out your wayfinder. I'll go into further detail about the mastery system in a future video, but for now, for the beginner's guide, just be aware that it's available and it will give you some nice bonuses whenever you utilize this system. System. Another way to increase your power and to customize your Wayfinder to your liking is through the Echo system. You can view the Echo system via the character menu. Echoes are items that have a chance to drop from almost every enemy in Wayfinder. Each Echo will have a stat or multiple stats or a passive associated with it. You can then slot that Echo into your Wayfinder weapon and accessories in order to increase your power rating. There are several different categories of Echoes and slotting an Echo of a particular category into the matching slot will reduce the cost of slotting that Echo. Your Wayfinder Finder, weapon and accessories all have echo capacity associated with them. This means you can only slot echoes up to a certain echo cost. You can see the cost of each echo on the right side of the echo menu whenever you're browsing through them. You can also fuse echoes together in order to make a particular echo stronger. So if you have multiple of a particular echo that you aren't utilizing, you can fuse them into an echo that you are using in order to upgrade it. The echo system is one of the primary methods of building out your character in Wayfinder. Through this method, you can customize your Wayfinder to have the stats and build that fits your play style. As you play, you're also going to collect accessories. This is another piece of gear that's going to customize your Wayfinder and give you additional stats. So each accessory has a set of stats associated with it. Accessories can also come equipped with Echo slots. The lower level accessories oftentimes will not have Echo slots, but as you progress, you will find some that do. Some accessories are also a part of a set. This means if you equip all three of the accessories out of that set, you'll receive a set bonus. An example of a set bonus is something like 10% to total ability power, magical defense, and crit rating. You can see the detailed information about each accessory you own by clicking on an accessory slot in your character menu. Once there, you can hover over an accessory and utilize the middle mouse button to see its stats, if it has set bonuses, the other accessories needed for the bonus, and its echo slots. You also have three available consumable slots. Your first slot consists of a health flask that you can utilize. It comes with several charges. This means you can only utilize it a certain amount of times before it needs refilling. Whenever you use all of a consumable, you don't need to craft any more, you simply need to refill them at a refill shrine. In order to obtain additional consumables, you will need to craft them. This can be done in Skylight by talking to Venge and selecting craft consumables. Each consumable you craft is going to require certain ingredients, gold, and a recipe. If you craft the same consumable, it's just going to give you additional charges for that particular consumable. You can see where to find all of the ingredients by selecting the potion you want to craft and pressing the default key of F. Once you've acquired all of the ingredients, you can select the potion and hold space to craft it. Once crafted, you don't need to craft it again. If you craft it again, just like was mentioned before, it'll just give you an additional charge for that particular potion. And in order to equip it, you simply need to navigate to your character screen and select the potion slot to equip whatever potion you want to use. Once you run out of the potion, Again, you just need to go to the refilling shrine and refill your charges for all of your potions. I have another guide coming out very soon that's going to go in much more detail about the consumable system in Wayfinder. And as you play Wayfinder, you're going to accumulate a lot of items. So if you come across some items that you don't want anymore, or if you're just trying to make some gold, you can sell those items to the same NPC that you utilize to craft consumables. His name is Vinge, and he's located in the market row in Skylight. Just walk up to him, interact, and simply select the sell option, and then you can sell whichever item you want from there. Wayfinder is also going to feature player housing and playing through the main story is going to unlock your housing for you. You're going to get this option fairly soon in the game. So make sure you are following along with the main story quest so that you can unlock your housing early. The first iteration of housing in Wayfinder is an apartment. 
And in order to enter your apartment, you will need to be in skylight. There's a building with a water wheel on the front of it. This is the inn. The building can be seen very easily by standing with your back to the gloom gate in skylight and then just looking forward. So once you're inside of the inn, make your way up the stairs. You only need to go up one flight of stairs and enter the door in the middle of the second flight to enter your apartment. Your apartment is an instanced home that you have full control to decorate as you please. You can also acquire trophies that you can interact with once a day to gain some items. There's also some artifacts that you can obtain that will give you a global buff whenever you place them in your house. You can access the artifact menu and change your active buff at any time by pressing C and entering the character menu. At the bottom of your screen, there will be a manage artifacts option. From there, you can select the artifacts you wish to have active. You have a limited amount of artifact power and activating an artifact will cost a predetermined amount of that power. So you can only have so many active at one time. I also have a complete housing guide coming very soon. There are also archetypes in Wayfinder. So every Wayfinder in the game is going to belong to a certain archetype or group. The arc type of a wayfinder determines a set of passives that the wayfinder will receive. You can see these passives by entering the character menu default key of C and selecting abilities. At the bottom of the screen, you're going to see two icons in the middle. Hovering over those icons will give you the full description of the archetypes passives that your wayfinder has. There are currently three archetypes that include the war master, arcanist, and survivalist. War masters are typically your traditional tanky or frontline class, and currently the two war masters are Wingrave and Sinja. Arcanists are the damage dealers, and they include Kairos and and Ness. And then the survivalists are more of a support based class centered around controlling the battlefield. And these currently include Silo and Venomous. Along with the archetype passive, you also have weapon passives. In Wayfinder, any character can equip any weapon in the game. When you equip a specific weapon, you're going to change your weapon class and weapon mechanic. You will also receive a weapon ability. The weapon ability is tied to the specific weapon and not to the weapon category. Every weapon in Wayfinder has its own unique ability. Currently, there are four categories of weapons in the game that include sword and shield, two handed dagger, and range. There can be several different weapons that fall into one of those broad categories, but the category of weapon is what determines which weapon passives that you are going to receive. And then the specific weapon you have equipped determines the weapon ability that you are going to get as well. The combat in Wayfinder is action-based and consists of a total of five abilities. You're going to receive four Wayfinder specific abilities and one weapon specific ability. Even though the combat is action-based, you can lock on to a certain target if you choose. You can see your target lock on keybind by pressing a escape and navigating to the keybind section. The Wayfinder abilities you receive will vary greatly depending on which Wayfinder you choose to play. You can view all those abilities and how they function within the character screen. You can also perform heavy attacks by pressing the default key of E and can perform jumping heavy attacks by jumping and pressing E as you land. Combos can be achieved as well by performing a full series of light attacks. Every weapon ability has different qualifications for it to be activated. These tie into your weapon passives that we talked about a little bit earlier. When you look at the ability screen, you can see how each weapon ability is activated by reading the weapon passive mechanics. So for example, if you're using daggers, you will earn what's called flourish points. You earn these by landing a fourth consecutive melee attack. So you have to land a full combo of light attacks to earn a flourish point. You then spend a flourish point by pressing the default key of E and the more flourish points you have, the more damage you will deal. And then every time you spend one of those flourish points, it's going to fill up your weapon ability meter. Once that meter is full, you can then utilize your weapon ability. Each weapon class has varying requirements for utilizing the weapon ability and again every single weapon in the game has its own unique weapon ability that you can use so whenever you jump into the game make sure you familiarize yourself with the weapon passives that you're going to be using that way you know exactly how to trigger your weapon ability because that's going to be key to combat in wayfinder also be aware of the heavy attacks that we talked about earlier and some of the combos that you can perform because chaining all of these things together is how you're going to get maximum damage and be effective in combat whenever you're playing the game. In Wayfinder, there are also several movement options you have as well. You have the ability to double jump, sprint, and dash or dodge. You can also dash while in the air. And in order to jump, the default key is spacebar. And then to double jump, you simply press spacebar again while you're in the air. You can also dash or dodge, which is going to give you an iframe. And each Wayfinder has a different type of dodge. And again, that falls under the archetype that your Wayfinder is in. That's one of the passives that you're going to receive for being
being in a specific archetype. So you need to make sure whenever you open up your character screen, you hover over the archetype dodge, and that's going to give you more information about the type of dodge or dash that you are going to receive on that wayfinder. And bear in mind that dodging does cost stamina. So if you exhaust your stamina, you're going to move slower, but jumping in and of itself does not cost any stamina. So just keep those things in mind as you're traversing through the world of wayfinder and make sure that you're using your movement accordingly whenever you're in combat. Wayfinder also has some fast traveling options. So fast traveling in the game is done via these things called signal fires. There are signal fires located throughout skylight and in the open world. Typically a signal fire can be found near the entrance of a lost zone or at other key locations. Once you discover and activate a signal fire, you can then open your map by pressing the default key of M. You can locate a signal fire, select it and travel to it. It is not necessary to be at another signal fire to fast travel. You can simply click on one on your map and travel to that location. It's also very important to note that once you locate a lost zone, you unlock that zone at the gloom gate in skylight. This means you do not have to go back to that specific lost zone entrance to enter that dungeon. You can simply travel to skylight, go to the gloom gate, and then enter it from there. The last thing we're going to talk about is the social menu and how to add friends because Wayfinder is definitely a social game. You're going to want to play with your friends. So in order to access the social menu to add friends and group up with friends, you can press the default key of O. In order to add someone as a friend, you're going to need to get their friend code. Your friend code can be located in the top right hand corner of the screen when accessing the social menu. You can also group up with nearby players if you happen to find someone and make a new friend while you're in Skylight or elsewhere. You can just go into the social menu. You click on the zone tab. You see the nearby players. You click their name and then click add to group. This will send them an invite to your group and that is a very easy way to group up with people that are in your same zone. But that's going to do it for this ultimate beginner's guide. I hope this helps you guys and hopefully this will help you get started in Wayfinder. I have a ton of other Wayfinder videos coming up and of course we're going to be covering this game for quite a while. Some of the other videos are going to include some more in-depth explanations about some of the systems discussed in this video and then of course just other things as they crop up as we play the game. But I greatly appreciate you guys being here. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy Wayfinder or enjoy Wayfinder content, please make sure to like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate that as well. And of course, I stream over at twitch.tv slash BDLG. We'll be playing a ton of Wayfinder over the coming weeks and I stream every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. CST and those are pretty long streams on Mondays. We stream every Friday at 8 o'clock a.m. CST and then we pull another stream over the weekend at some point. I'd love to see you come hang out over there. We have a fantastic time on stream. It'd be great if you stopped by. But that's going to do it for this one, boys and girls. Thank you again so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. We'll see you in the next one.